Merry Christmas. Christmas. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service here at Granville United Methodist Church. My name is Ryan and I'm the pastor here and it's my joy to welcome you on this night of all nights when we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior, a birth that changes this world, that changes our hearts, that changes everything. I'm glad you are here to celebrate with us tonight. We're going to begin in just a moment with the lighting of our Advent candle, but I wanted to give you a little bit of background before we begin tonight. Um, up on the altar, we have a candle uh, which was lit for us earlier today from another candle, which was lit from another candle, which was lit from a candle in Bethlehem at this spot right here up on the screen. This is the grotto of the nativity. This is the traditional spot where it is believed the manger was placed, where uh, the baby Jesus was laid uh, after he was born. And so in, in that spot at the very beginning of Advent each year a candle is lit there and that flame is then, it's flown first to Germany and then to New York City, from New York City to Lansing, from Lansing to Grand Rapids and the light of Christ is spread then throughout the world, and so that flame continues to burn here in this place tonight as we remember the light of Christ being born into this world and into our hearts this evening. So let's welcome the presence of Christ into this place as we light our Advent candle. came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger. Tonight, angels far and near sing tender lullabies, well-worn fabric full of years holds in the warmth of parental love. Animals and shepherds crowd in tight, glowing with adoration, while a muffled cry squeezes out to greet the world. Tonight, we give thanks for every child among us. Each new birth, regardless of circumstances, reminds us of the preciousness of life, the potential of tomorrow, the promise of God. On this Christmas Eve, we light the Christ candle for the child king, the infant redeemer, the lowly Lord, and now we know he's born and nothing will ever be the same. Did I go too fast? Let us stand and sing together. Number 240 in your hymnal, the words will also be up on the screen. Verses 1 and 3, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Let us pray. Gracious God, on this night of all nights, and each day of our lives, may the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts, and the works of our hands be acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength, our hope, and our Redeemer. Amen. I love a good Christmas story, and this season is full of them. Just think of the Christmas movies alone. There are hundreds of them, and everyone seems to have a personal favorite. It's a Wonderful Life, White Christmas, Miracle on 34th Street, The Nutcracker, A Christmas Story, Frosty the Snowman, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, A Charlie Brown Christmas, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, The Best Christmas Pageant Ever, Ernest Saves Christmas, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, 19 different versions of A Christmas Carol, Home Alone, The Polar Express, The Snowman, The Santa Claus, Elf, and of course, Die Hard. (laughs) I'm watching out for you dads out there. It takes place at Christmas, so it counts. And that doesn't even include the Christmas books, each approaching the holiday from a slightly different perspective and hopefully adding some richness or a, a new facet to this season of joy. Tonight, though, we come to the one story that serves as the foundation for them all, a story that that changes us and that changes the world even now after 2,000 years. Tonight we hear the beginning of what is known as the greatest story ever told, a title which comes from a movie, which came from a book, which came from a radio series, which featured events from the life of Jesus. That radio program was broadcast coast to coast and to 58 other countries for almost 10 years, and still today you will hear the story of Jesus' birth, life, teaching, death, and resurrection referred to as the greatest story ever told. This title makes sense to me, and yet at the same time I still think that it falls short. Because when I think of a story, I think of imagination and fantasy and escape from reality. But the story of God's Son born in a humble manger is just the opposite. It is not, it's God not shying away from the harsh realities of this world, but facing them head on, taking them upon himself overcoming them through an unimaginable act of grace. In the end, this story is the greatest story ever told because it is true. And this true story echoes in our hearts tonight and it begins to change the way that we see and engage the world around us from from this very moment forward. This story changes everything. In just a few minutes, we will hear the story of Christmas in in two different forms, from a children's book read to us by Miss Bobby, and from this book, the Bible. Now, no matter how many times you hear the story of the birth of Jesus, there is always something new to be learned. And this year, what has been echoing in my heart each time I hear the biblical story of Jesus' birth is the fact that this book, with all of its books and chapters and verses, all of its thousands of pages and thousands of years of history captured here, it is all one story. This is the story of God's love for you from the beginning of time to the end of creation. One story. It's true. Tonight, Jesus is born outside the lights of the city in what we picture in our minds as a modern stable, what looks to me in many modern nativity scenes as a picnic shelter of some sort. But this place was most likely a room for animals, perhaps carved out of the rock, a cave of sorts where animals could take shelter in bad weather. Feeding troughs in this time would often be fashioned out of a ledge in the wall of the cave so that the animals could stay warm and dry and be fed in peace and safety. 
Mary herself most likely grew up in a home like this, carved out of the limestone cliffs on the outskirts of Nazareth. Here in this borrowed stable, she gives birth to a son, and she wraps him in bands of cloth and lays him on this feeding trough for animals with Joseph by her side as the angels welcome him with songs of joy. Christ is born. And this is just a chapter in God's plan for our salvation from the very beginning. It is all one story. I want you to hold those images in your mind. Mary, Joseph, a borrowed stable perhaps carved into the cliffside, a rough-hewn ledge for a cradle, bands of cloth, angels announcing. <coughs> Do you have that image in your mind? Now look forward with me to how we know this chapter of the story of salvation ends. Just over 30 years later, Jesus dies for us on a cross as Mary Magdalene and perhaps Jesus' mother herself looks on. His body is taken down by another Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea, and is wrapped in bands of cloth. Where is it placed? On a ledge in a borrowed cave, a tomb carved out of the limestone cliffs. And the angels gather, this time to announce to the world resurrection. Hope is born. Mary, Joseph, borrowed tomb carved into the cliffside, rough-hewn ledge for a bed, bands of cloth, angels announcing good news to the world. It is all one story. From the first chapters of Genesis where sin enters the story in a garden to the moment where sin and death are overcome in the unimaginable miracle of resurrection in an unfinished tomb in a garden. It is all one story. The story of God's great love for you, overcoming every obstacle, overcoming sin and death, overcoming our own resistance and tendency to turn away from the one who created us, redeems us, and walks with us still. It is all one story captured for us in the pages of the one book. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, once found himself reflecting on how short each one of our life stories are, and yet how eternal God's love is for us. And he wrote down these words. I sometimes think that I am a creature of a single day, passing through life like an arrow through the air. I am a spirit come from God and returning to God just hovering over nothingness, till a few moments from now I will disappear, dropping into an unchangeable eternity. I want to know just one thing, the way to heaven, how to land safe on that happy shore. God himself has come down to teach us the way. This is the reason he came down from heaven. And he has written it down in a book. Oh, give me that book. At any price, give me the book of God. I have it, and it is enough for me. Let me be a man of the one book, the one story. We are people of the one book, people of the one story, the story of God's great love, revealed to us tonight as the cry of a newborn baby echoes out into the world and as a new chapter in our journey of faith begins. Christ is born. Glory to God. Amen. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks for this night of celebration and joy. We give thanks for the journey that has brought us here for the season of Advent, of preparing our hearts for the celebration to come. We give thanks, O oh Lord, for the one story that we are a part of, the story of your great love 
for us, a story that is still being written in our lives today. We pray, O Lord, that this night we might be able to focus there on the manger, to unite our hearts together in worship and in great joy, knowing that through this single act, through sending your Son to save us, you have changed the course of history and changed our lives for the better. We pray, O Lord, that your transformative grace might wash over us this night and that we might greet this newborn King with joyful song. We pray all these things in his most precious name. Amen. As we set the scene for this Christmas story, the greatest story ever told, let us sing together number 230 in your hymnal. You may remain seated as we sing together O Little Town of Bethlehem, verses 1 and 4. First lesson is from the Gospel Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. You may remain seated as we sing Away in a Manger, verses 1 and 3.
And for the second lesson, we'll continue on with the story in Luke 2, verses 8 through 15. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. If you could stand now at this time, we'll sing Joy to the World, verses 1 and 4. Miss Bobby comes forward, I would invite any other children who are with us tonight who would like to hear the story of the Nativity come up at this time and have a seat on the steps here. With come on down. Here. I need help. Lots of help. <laughs> Merry Christmas, guys. I need some help from you for the story. I need your best bat. Can you do that? Oh, you do better than that. Let me hear it. One, two, three. Okay, when I go like this, you're going to bat. When I go like this, you're going to cut. Got it? Let's do it. Good. Now, I need some, um, maybe some horses. Let me hear you. Good. Now, I need a donkey. How about chicken cluck, cluck, cluck? Anybody? Good. And let's see. We got sheep. I think that's good. OK. Now, when I point to you and you go like this, oh, cow, we need a cow. You're right. Let me hear cow. Moo. Oh, you're good. Now, I want you to pick your favorite animal, because at one time when I go like this, you can pick any one of those animals and make that noise. But when I go like this, just bad. Let's check it. Pick your favorite animal. Ready? Good job. How about bad? Good. We're ready for the book, The Birth of Jesus. And guess what? The pictures are there, which is hard to see in there, and they're right back there if you can't see them in the book, which just fell away from you. Long ago in the town of Nazareth lived a young woman named Mary. One day, Mary had a shock. She saw an angel. The angel Gabriel said, 
Don't be afraid. I bring you good news about Christ our Lord, the King of the Jews. God is going to bless you with a baby, said Gabriel, and his name will be Jesus. You already knew it. I will do as God asks, said Mary. Now Mary was engaged to marry Joseph the carpenter. What would he think about Mary having a baby? Joseph was upset. But then one night he had a dream and in his dream an angel told him all about Mary's baby coming from God. You will name the baby just said the angel. When Joseph woke up, he understood. So Joseph and Mary were married. Mary married, yep. At this time, everyone had to be counted so they could pay taxes. Mary and Joseph had to go to Joseph's hometown to be counted. Mary was pregnant and almost ready to have her baby. So she rode on a donkey. It was a long, tiring journey. They traveled all the way from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Couldn't take the car, could they? No? Yeah, we had one donkey on there. Should we do a hee-haw? Okay, everybody hee-haw, ready? <laughs> I didn't plan for that page. <laughs> When at last Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem, the streets were crowded, and there was no room left at the inn. What could they do? Where could they stay? Joseph found a stable, and Mary settled down. That night, baby Jesus was born in the stables. Mary rocked the baby in her arms. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him gently in the manger. What other animals? Okay, you ready for the sheep in just a minute? The same night, some shepherds were looking down after their sheep. Suddenly, they were afraid. A crowd of singing angels appeared in the sky. Don't be afraid, I bring you good news about Christ our Lord, the King of the Jews, sang an angel. You will find him in a manger. <laughs> the shepherds hurried to Bethlehem to see if it was true. And it was true. They found baby Jesus lying in a manger. The shepherds thanked God and went to tell everyone the story. <laughs> Far from Bethlehem, three wise men from the east saw a bright star in the night sky. The star was a sign that a new king of Jesus was born. They set off on a long journey to Jerusalem to see King Herod. He would know all about it. Where is the new king? The wise men asked King Herod. King Herod knew nothing about it. He asked his advisors where the new king had been. In Bethlehem, so it is told, they said. So King Herod sent them wise men to Bethlehem. Tell me when you find him, said King Harry, Herod. He didn't want anyone else to be king. Was he a good guy? No, he's a bad guy. Yeah, he's not bad. The three wise men followed the star to Bethlehem until it shone above a house. The wise men found Mary and Jesus inside the house, and they bowed down and they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And in a dream, the wise men were warned not to tell King Herod where Jesus lived, so they went straight home. Joseph took Mary and the baby Jesus to Egypt where they were safe from King Herod. Okay, thank you, God. Should we, should 
Should we have a prayer we, we echo? You repeat me, okay? Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for sending the shepherds and the wise men so we would know all about Jesus. Amen. Okay, back to our seats. As the children are returning to their seats, let us join with the shepherds and the angels and the wise men as we sing together, O Come All Ye Faithful, number 234, verses 1 and 3. Let's stand. lesson comes from Luke chapter 2 verses 16 through 20. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Please stay seated and join in singing Go Tell It on the Mountain, verses 1 and 3.
just a moment, we will be receiving our Christmas offering. Uh, we do need a few volunteer ushers to collect the offering this evening. Our evening offering on Christmas Eve, every Christmas, goes to a special cause. Uh, it is our way of shining the light of Christ out in this world. Tonight, our offerings go to our United Methodist missionaries in Zambia and their ministry, Mobility Worldwide, which provides uh, wheelchairs and other uh, assistance in mobility for those uh, who are differently able, for those who are unable to walk. These are wheelchairs and other designs that require no external power, or batteries, electricity. They are driven by hands most of the time. Um, and they are a means of being a full member in the society in which they find themselves. It is the gift of offering full life to those who are on the outside looking in, to those who are excluded from their society there in Zambia. And so it is a meaningful mission, uh, mission work that they are undertaking there, and it is our way of supporting them by offering our entire Christmas Eve offering to those in greatest need uh, over in Africa. So I hope you will uh, support their ministry through our offering tonight. Let us give of ourselves during this time of worship and of great joy. Mary, what did you think when you first felt the movement? Mary, what did you think when you knew that it was true? Mary, what did you think when you first saw the angel and knew about the miracle happening in you? Mary, what did you think when you first held your baby? Mary, what did you think when you held him to your breast? Mary, what did you think when you looked into his eyes, knowing he was different? so different from the rest. And Mary, how did you feel? Yes, Mary, how did you feel? When in the temple you heard your heart would be pierced by a sword, Mary, how did you feel? Mary, what did you think as you watched your child grow? Mary, what did you think when in the temple he was found? Mary, what did you think as he lectured the elders and it became apparent on the path down which he was bound. And Mary, how did you feel? Yes, Mary, how did When he would not come home, but through the countryside would roam. Mary, how did you feel? Mary, what did you think when he entered triumphant? Mary, what did you think? when he rode into town. Mary, what did you think with the palm branches waving? Did you think that maybe this event would mean an earthly crown? And Mary, 
how did you feel? Yes, Mary, how did you feel? When they nailed him to the cross, did you think that all was lost? Mary, how did you feel? And Mary, how did you feel? Yes, Mary, how did you feel? From that movement in your womb Till you beheld the empty tomb Mary, how did you feel? Yes, Mary, how did you feel? After all of the waiting, this night has arrived. Christ is born. We welcome the presence of Christ into each of our hearts and our lives as we sing together of this silent night, this holy night. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4, and we will spread the light of Christ throughout the congregation. You probably received a candle on the way in. If you did not, just raise your hand and we will make sure that one is given to you. We will bring the light down the center aisle and if you will pass it uh, down your row to the people sitting next to you. If you would please keep the lighted candle upright and tilt the other candle to light it as we sing together Silent Night, Holy Night, verses 1, 2, and 4. Two. 
And now go in peace. And may the peace of the newborn king dwell in your heart this night and always. Go in grace and peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.